Hello everyone, my name is Iwe Tiola and you're welcome to this edition of the show, Oge. Okay. Now our first feature is on a gentleman who is a bundle of talent. I'm not sure how any one person can do everything he does and he does each and every one of them extremely well. My full name is um, Abe Chile Emmanuel Abuede um, from Delta. And, um, well, um, I studied fine art in, at the Polytechnic Baden. And um, right now I'm applying my art skills in music, fashion, and um, every other thing that I do. I I would say a movie came first because I was I can, I can remember the first movie I featured in. It was called Badre 419 um, with them Baba One Day, Mama Rainbow, all star, star studded movie, and that was in way back. <laughs> that was way, 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 way back. Then um, I dived into music because I used to have a um, love for music, and my dad used to have a record label. and. I was um, a chorist at my uncle's church. From there, I took music seriously. I've been a fashionista right from my childhood. My dad actually influenced the fashion and me. Um, I remember then when he used to get us, um, when he used to buy our clothes, he used to buy them for me, that Italy, London, and you know, and I was this kind of kid that didn't like to wear what every other person would want to put on. I'll get a ready-made culture and then I rip it off. Then um, the the other part I rip off, I try to use it as a flap and make it a dungrace. You get from myself. Then, with time, people started you know liking my designs and everything. Then, a friend just came from there. I was like, you know, you can actually make money off this. That you can you can be making things for people and you make money off it. And that was how I just started. Then, when I was going to come up with the name, I thought of um, different names. You know, like, how do you even make clothes? You would need, um, probably, you cannot make any clothes with, without thread and um, needle, you understand? And I came up with um, needles and stitches. You get it? Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say I'm the CEO of Needles and Stitches, and we're doing well. <laughs> And I go give her anything what she want and what she want to do. Sexy mama come run for me, I do. And if you want to know if you come run for me, I do. My musical career started like a long, 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 long time ago. I never really had plans to go into music life where I just had love for music. But at that point in time, I was, you know, I wasn't so impressed with um, the kind of um, artists that we used to have then. I was like, I, this person can do this, I can do better then, so why can't I just, you know, do it and go into music? Then I started um, as a solo artist first for like a year trying to um, put things together, then um, Auntie came to me and she was like, oh, this in-law of ours is a rapper that we should do a group thing and all that. And I said, okay, she come through. They went to the studio, it was quite good. Flo came in as well. There's this Flo of Kensho, because we can a Kensho Lumen Sin. So we came in a picture as well and we came up with the name um, High Profile. We were together for nine years. We were on a stable of... Um, Black Soul Records. We had like um, three years of um, deal with them. After three years, we decided to do our individual things and um, Flo went with um, Kensho and um, Kezio um, was doing his own solo thing too. Then I got signed um, on that stable of um, Yes Records. I had three years um, deal with them. That was when I came up with um, South African Girl that was everywhere. South African girl, Omar Gay, and I got an um, MTV based nomination, um, Channel O nomination, won several awards. South African girl, girl, be my wife, like the way you smile, like it, but not to lie. South African girl, girl, be my wife, like the way you smile, like it, but not to lie. South 
African girl. Would you be my wifey, wifey, way you smile? I like it. Well, I like to lie. I like it. You like the way you move. You make me want to move. Make me feel so loose. Come into my room. I woke up one morning. Go, Kabasa, buy am ticket. After the two years contract, I decided to do my own thing and I came up with my own label called Ishe Kononi Inc. <laughs> so, on Ishe Kononi Inc, I've been able to at least um, drop some songs that have been doing really well, like Baby Dialaja. Baby Dialaja was actually, you know, epic. So, I came up with the video Baby Dialaja that was shot in the Nevada by um, Film Boy and Patrick Ellis. And the concept was an old school concept. We went back to the 60s and we actually got it right. The video actually won, you know, claimed lots of awards at what night at the NNVA. I won about five awards. I got like eight nominations and I claimed five awards that night. Then all the awards came through. And um, after Baby Day Alaja, um, I came up with another single called Mambo featuring Iyanya which was a big thing outside Nigeria at the um, um, East African countries. Then the very famous one, CC, that's everywhere. If you give me your love, I can show you my heart, you know say you're bad, you know say you're bad, CC. But in your way, me just take a look, baby, I can show you your bad, along my bad, Do I actually find myself struggling, you know, between the church boy and the secular music? The fact still remains that we just have to do what we have to do. This is this is music. We have to. We 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 are around to entertain people. I mean, I'm just doing good music. I'm just out there to cater for people, to make people happy. So whatever makes them happy, I do it. I do a lot, actually. I bop to this. I did this myself. This is my air cord by myself. 1993, I won African Latin American Babin Award. I do a lot of things. I play football professionally. If I wasn't doing music, acting, and um, fashion, I probably would have been a professional footballer. I used to be a very good boxer. I did um, professional boxing for three years. <laughs> I was that child, you know, I was that child while growing up. I wanted to, you know, so curious and I wanted to do everything. I was just that too talented. And I think I got all these things from my father because my father was multi-talented as well. He was doing most of all these things that, you know, I'm doing right now. So I'm just that curious boy that just wants to learn and know everything. You should be asking what don't I do, <laughs> not what I do, I <laughs> think. If I could do one thing to fix Nigeria, I would fight corruption because that's the major key. That's the main thing that is making Nigeria not to grow as I speak right now. I would never do any dubious thing. I would never do anything that's got to do with correction. I am a very, very straightforward person and transparent. Um, three things that can impede anyone's journey to success. Okay, I would say um, when, you're doing, when you're not doing what you're meant to do, when you're not doing it right, that is one. Then two, um, if you don't, if you don't believe in God and if you're not prayerful, then um, three, um, if you're not consistent and devoted. Style is me. Style is me. Yeah. <laughs> For the tapes, for the organ man that wants to look out of the box, consistent with whatever thing you're doing, style or whatever thing you're doing, always be forecast. Then um, just be you. Personal philosophy of life is um, well, the way I see life is um, what is what doing is what doing well, and um, live your life the way you say it, basically.
Welcome back. back. Now, our next profile is on a gentleman who has kept us literally all laughing for the last 10 years. My name is Aiko Kechuku, and I'm an actor, director, and um, producer. I was born in Lagos, and a place called Ulodia Papa. I went to school in the same area, Sinclair Grammar School. I, after that, I went to University of Lagos. I studied in theater arts. I majored in directing. I, after that, um, I've been hustling <laughs> in this industry. I've done quite a few jobs, and um, I'm happy where I am right now. I grew up in a house where everybody was studying science. Everybody was, you were either in engineering or you were in medicine, you know. So I felt that my parents, well, would not want me to come up and say, oh, I want to go and study theater. And as chance or God would, uh, you know, do it, I was um, given theater arts as a course to study. And uh, I didn't get the course I wanted to read in school. So the VC signed on my papers and said they should transfer me to theater arts. For some reason, I, I really can't um, pinpoint right now, but that's how it happened. Before I go into school, I was always going to National Theatre to, you know, to join um, some groups that were into, you know, different plays. So I kind of got a, big, um, um, a good start from there. So when I go into school, I was always going to auditions. I auditioned for a role, which became Chooks. While I was auditioning for Chooks, I was told, or rather, when I got into Chooks, I was told that the character was actually meant to be chubby. So, but when they saw me, they were like, okay, I think we could rework this character to fit this guy. I would always thank Tinsel for, for one major thing in my life, which is giving me my wife. I knew of her in school, but uh, we never got to meet, but eventually we met. It's a case of um, life imitating art because we got married on Tinsel. In fact, I've married my wife so many times, I've lost count. Uh, we got married on Tinsel first before we got married in real life. And our lives on Tinsel, we gave birth to a girl first before we gave birth to a girl in real life. It's, it's amazing marrying, um, uh, marrying that woman. And it's been a joyride. People always ask me, is it how, does, how do we cope life? Don't we see ourselves too much? We don't. <laughs> you know, I, we've, come, we've come to a point where we, we take work as work and we take, and whenever we're at work, we, we are working. And when we're home, we're at home. There's the two lives. I don't know how we were able to do it, but we did it. They don't clash in any way. And I love the character Chooks. I, I, I love the character Chooks. It's been, it's, been, it's been wonderful. Playing the same character, for, you know, at the point you get to, you get, you've lived the character's life and you're like, you know, you know the character so well that people see you and they even think that you are still the character in real life. And, but it's been fun. It's been, it's been good. It happens even in Hollywood. I mean, people, when actors play a particular role after a while, people get to see them as only playing that, you know, kind of role. And I have, I have had talks with people who can't see me beyond comedy. It's not a good thing per se for an actor. I want to do other things, you know, but people keep seeing you as comedy, comedy, chooks, chooks. It can be annoying. I'm telling myself that the next job I'm going to do, which will not be comedy, I want to use it to, re to change people's um, idea concern, you know, about me. And I'm hoping to do that very soon. Right now, I would like to play a character that has um, a psychological problem. And that is, had nothing to do with comedy. A deep-rooted, dramatic character. Well, directing, I've been, I've been picking up, you know, bits and pieces of things right from school and all that. And um, I've been, I've worked on that, well, some directors, known directors. I've tried to do some courses, short courses and all that. And I, I was able to do my first film called The Reveal. And did another short film called um, Out of Sight. And directing is, is beautiful. For me, I, directing is, it's, uh, it's power. You know, <laughs> I, the fact that you can actually assemble a, a film from beginning to end, it's beautiful. And I've always had that calling uh, to be a director. And I'm happy now that I can actually do that. Acting is my first love, yes. But I've always wanted to direct. 
it's it's something I watch I watch films as a kid. I used to watch film and I'm like, the the actor should have come this way, or the story should be this way, or the lighting should be that. as far back as I can remember. Something that I've always wanted to do, and it's it's about time for me. I would have started a couple of years back if that things actually worked out well for me initially. I would have started a long time ago, but so it's something that I really needed to do. It's it's a matter of life, and well, I won't say that other one, but. I'm actually looking forward to directing a film and um, a TV series. The TV series is something that I know that Nigerians would love. It's a remarkable story. We wrote the series and we're so, so, we're so amazed with what we did. In fact, sometimes when I read it, I'm like, well, we're on steroids when we wrote this story. It's an amazing story. It's, it's something that we really need to bring out. We also have a movie titled Beneath, and uh, we're working on that one as well. So those are the things my uh, the things I'm looking forward to direct. Has Nollywood evolved? Yes. I have been opportune to be in the industry for the past, for well over 10 years, and um, I would say it has taken giant strides. And back then, there were only few players in the industry, but right now, there are, there are, there are a lot of players. People are coming up, people, individual, you know, um, indie producers, indie directors, people are coming up with life and stuff that to make very, very good productions. Uh, fine, we might not have hit that, you know, A spot yet. So we've not, we can't compare ourselves with Hollywood yet, but we are, we are moving. Mnet Multi-Choice has actually helped this industry a great deal. And since they came, they have been able to help young filmmakers and they've given, given a platform um, for young people both young and old um, filmmakers to actually have a, a place to show and to do things. They've funded uh, productions. They have, you know, they have given people a platform like the MVCS to showcase and to be uh, awarded for those things. They, they've come a long way. They've really helped this industry a great deal. To me, we are where we are now because of them. We can't take them out of the equation because they have actually helped us a great deal. My opinion of the Nigerian youth, I feel that we are diverse. I feel that they are hungry. I feel that they have misplaced priorities, some of them. I feel that there are things, they, they, if they are given the right things and they are given things to work on, things to do, they will excel. And uh, I feel that we need to engage them. They have a lot to offer. First of all, I think I would have to rectify the power industry, the power sector. If there's power 24-7, people would, would want to be productive. A lot of companies would be productive, more productive. A lot of people outside would come to Nigeria. Power is a major thing. I will never kill poverty, not just financial poverty of the mind lack of hope. They are daring, they are bold. Uh, I just feel that they would, um, they would, I just, I just feel that they would respect themselves more. My personal philosophy is put God first, fear him, respect him, love him, and family. Chooksy Chooks, who knows what he's going to get up to next. And so we come to the end of another edition of our show. I sincerely hope you enjoyed yourself. Now you know what to do. Follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Send us an email or log on to our website. We would love to hear from you. Until I come your way with another exciting edition of the show, look after yourselves and let's be kind to one another. <laughs>